Hi, I'm Blair Lockwood. I'm a second year product design engineering student. Uh, I'm currently a PSM on the GE Board Management and on the 3rd of March I'll be running for Honorary Secretary. Well, thanks for talking to us, Blair. Um, your manifesto says that uh, you'll be easy to approach by students about ideas and issues. Um, why is this? Uh, well, a few other, me, myself and a few other uh, people that are running for board positions have had uh, conversations about maybe having drop-in sessions. It's in a few people's manifestos as well uh, about like times, maybe once a week, that members can come to have a conversation with us. Do you think those drop-in sessions will be, be particularly well attended? Not sure, but you can't know until you try it. Mm -hmm. So then, you know, if they're not well attended, then how are you being more approachable? You know, yeah. how are you actually interacting with the wider uh, union membership? Well, we can have these PR'd on social media and stuff, um, put our email addresses as well. It doesn't have to be face-to-face -face if people don't want to come and drop in face-to-face, -face, but, but the option's there. Doesn't the union already have quite a dedicated PR strategy? Uh, yeah, there's a, t a PR team in place. So in that sense, they're not really doing anything different? Well, it would be introducing something new, so... Yes, but something that you admit might not work. Might not work, but you've got to try it. So before. then, you know, why do you got this policy in the manifesto? Surely, you know, you want to, if you want to, uh, you know, change the perception of the, of the GU as being quite elite, then, you know, if you're going to promise to do something, then, you know, have the guts to see it through. Well, that's what I said. Okay. I didn't say I wouldn't. Well, okay. If it so wasn't working, I wouldn't try it. Okay, um, so obviously you, you've uh, been PSM for one year now. Yeah. Uh, and now you're going to run for on set. Do you see this as quite a large jump? Do you, do you think you have enough experience to, to, uh, to do the job? <coughs> yeah, obviously it's a huge jump. Uh, going on to any exact position is going to be a big change. Um, I've only been on for one year, but it's been quite a significant year. Mm. Opening the new club, managing new spaces, um, lots of new events, a completely different fresh this week with a new club open for a few dates. Mm -hmm. That Friday with the Hive as well. It's a completely different um, point of view, but... Yeah, I think I'm experienced enough after this year to do that. Um, one thing you say in your manifesto is that you want to make Freshers' Week uh, bigger and better. Um, how is this going to happen? Well, the last few years there's been no club, obviously. Uh, this year we had it for a few days. Um, we we're still sort of trying the new spaces. Didn't really know how it was going to work. Whereas this week, this year we're going to have the club for Friday to Sunday. Uh, the whole time, so it leaves potential for anything at any time as well. So many more events at certain times. You can use the old building as well for different things. It doesn't have to be a constant changeover, whereas um, you could have one event starting half an hour after in the new building um, when there's been something on in the old building before. It's like but, a constant um, stream. Do you have any specific ideas for the kind of events that will make Freshers' Week bigger and better? Um, well, we've had a lot of thought about not just for Freshers' Week, but for maybe once a month as well for external promoters coming in, um, running their kind of nights, depending on, like that doesn't... Well hang on, that's not Freshers Week. If it's well, I said month. including Freshers okay. Week. Okay. So Freshers Week or throughout the term, maybe once a month. Mm -hmm. um, external people coming in, live music, um, comedy, it doesn't, like, it could be anything with the new spaces, there's such a variety of opportunities. Yeah. Um, so do you think that the GU is perhaps too passive at the university? Uh, there have been a few issues with the old people at Hyde, for instance, the fire alarm. Um, do you think it's something that needs to be changed? Not really. Um, I think it's, it's quite hard to communicate with a, when a bunch of students are trying to get on top of a huge organisation as well as like it's not just the university, it's the contractor's fault. Um, certain things haven't been t to the specification that we've been told or that we've wanted. Um, some things are still ongoing. Obviously that's not ideal but we're having to work with it because we've got no other option at the moment. Um, with the fire alarm, when we finally said that enough is enough, there's been a lot of changes since then already. Um, they've been a lot more like upfront and honest about what's actually happening, and it seems to be going in a good direction. So, do you think that you'd want to continue that kind of uh, that kind of candor with the university uh, that has only just started to happen? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, so let's talk about kind of the inter-union rivalry uh, between the Green Market Union and GU. Um, what do you think can be done, perhaps, to, to make the <coughs> two union structure more cooperative? Do you think it needs to be more cooperative? Um, I, s I don't know if it needs to be more cooperative. I think it's good at the moment the way it is. Um, Glasgow Uni offers something that no other university in the UK does with having two unions. Um, creates competition all through the year. Uh, it's good. It offers a variety of things to everyone, whereas it's, if there's something on one night someplace, uh, say for the GE example, 
at the same night there could be something completely different on at the QM. Um, I think it's a completely positive thing. It can appeal to like a wider group of students. I don't see it as an issue at all. Okay. Um, so how do you think the union can make more money at a time when you know, the block grant isn't likely to increase? Um, it's, I suppose it's hard, obviously. Um, with our club nights at the moment, uh, they seem to both be going pretty well. Uh, the only thing I can suggest really is like things that are out of the norm. So like, it doesn't have to just be our Thursday, Saturday every week, but why not have an occasional Tuesday event or a Sunday event, um, one-off things and like that. I think that's going to you know, make up any kind of financial shortfall to like cover. Well, I, I don't think there's been a huge amount of financial shortfall. Well, that's because the university's been subsidised saying the union. Yeah, that's because we've not had a club. Yeah, but now you do have a club. You've got to rely on that club to bring in all the revenue. Yeah, which I think is doing so at the moment. Okay. Um, so, when it comes to making a choice between the GEU as a venue for, say, private functions, but also you know, giving <coughs> student clubs and societies access to rooms and facilities, how do you gain that balance? Well, it's obviously a huge building. Um, it's four spaces in the new extension, as well as in the old building, there's several rooms that you can have for different events that are suitable for different events. Um, I think it's important to have that balance, to be honest. Um, it doesn't make it just like a business. Mm -hmm. It still involves the students, it still gives them an opportunity to have it as their sort of private function as well. But say, for instance, if you, you know, needed to raise some you know, quick hard cash and you had a private function going on, but that, that was at the expense of a student society, then how do you, you know, look the student society in the eye and say, I'm sorry, we just had to get some money in uh, to the university by holding a private function? I'm not really sure what you mean by that. But what I mean is to say that there have to be compromises um, made when you're you know, uh, increasing the amount of uh, private functions that are happening with the GEU. Yeah. Because um, it's often societies that are the ones who have to take a hit on that. So how do you tell societies that it's not a problem, that you know, it's fine that they're not going to get the room booking that they wanted? I don't think that's been a huge problem, to be honest. Um, the building's never that busy that there's not a single space available. Um, I haven't seen that as a problem that we've had, it's never been brought up, so no, I don't think that is an issue. Okay, looking again at manifestos, um, Robbie Mills, your, your uh, competitor for this uh, position, uh, has a number of policy commitments, in fact it's one of the, the longest manifestos that uh, we at the Guardian have seen, while well, yours is relatively short in comparison with policy, would, would you say that you're perhaps lacking in substance? No, I try to keep it quite short, because People don't want to read pages and pages of um, information at a the time. They don't take in at all. So what's the point? I've tried to keep my points quite short, quite concise, and actually straight to the point. But you don't think you have fewer ideas for the union than Robbie? Uh, maybe on paper, yeah. But at the same time, you can't aim to improve everything at the same time. N nothing happens overnight. It's a, it's a long process. Mm -hmm. So why should people vote for you, Mr. Robbie, then, if you don't have those kind of promises <coughs> on paper? Um, well, it's... So it is just down to paper at the end of the day, isn't it? So have a read of his, have a read of mine, and see who you agree with more. So you're not, you're not going to make uh, an effort to try and win round voters? That's my campaign. That's what I'm doing with that. OK. Um, so there's only one contested election at the GU, on the GE exec this year. Why is democracy in such a bad state in the GE? I don't know if I'd say that. The last few years, there was only one contested exec position. Um, the, there was no convener positions contested last year either. But um, so therefore it's an ongoing problem, it's been a problem for a while. Yeah, well maybe, but so, you, know, why do you, think you could say that about any place as well. There's a few uncontested positions at GUSA, there's uncontested positions at the QMU, there's uncontested Yes, but at the same time there have been four presidential candidates for the QMU and Fergus Gray gets them uncontested. Yeah. So are, are you saying that there isn't a problem with democracy within the GEU? Mm, yeah. yeah. It's all, I'd say it's all about timing. Like a lot of the board that are on at the moment are moving on. Uh -huh. um, there's maybe three people staying on from last year. Um, like, if people are leaving uni that have been on board and have the experience of being on board, there's no other option for there's no other option for them to run for presidency because they're going. If so there's one person that feels they've got the experience to go for president, then why wouldn't they? So perhaps it's a, a systematic problem. You know that there are. Too few people getting involved with the Yeah, maybe. Well, how are you going to combat 
well, we're trying to combat that with these committees, PR team, trying to get people involved and work their way up through that. But do you see it perhaps a, a, as a, an image problem that the execs are too cliquey, that people don't necessarily want to get involved because of that? Um, no, I don't see that at all. Um, I think there's been problems with that in the past, but uh, I think we're working hard to get past that, and I think everyone sees that when they come and actually give it a go. Well, I'm not going to think very much.